If you are a Go programmer, work done is equals to number of Go keywords inside the main function. With this new knowledge, I was ready to bend the laws of physics until I started to see deadlocks everywhere in my program. And then I realized that I need to follow Golang concurrency patterns in order to implement concurrency in my programs. So today I will be talking about five common Golang concurrency patterns that you absolutely need to follow whenever you are starting to build concurrent programs in Golang. Pattern one, worker pool concurrency. Have you ever wondered how platforms like Netflix and Airbnb handles millions of connection without deploying millions of server? Worker pool concurrency is one of the most frequently used concurrency pattern. Think of worker pool as factory where go routines are workers and each of them take task from the same conveyor belt delivering them task one by one. Here the conveyor belt can be considered as the task queue. Now let's look at the architecture of worker pool concurrency. You have four components in this. One is task queue, a channel that holds all the incoming task. Workers go routines that fetches task from the queue and processes them. Then there is a result channel, a channel that is meant for the workers to send their results. And finally, there is a synchronization using weight groups among all these workers and the task queue. Let's look at the code example. Let's create a task object which holds the ID parameter. Then we define a worker which takes the ID parameter and waits for one second, basically simulating the real world process. After that, we are going to use these workers in our run worker pool concurrency example. In this function, first let me define all the workers that we have. Here we will be having 20 tasks and we have 5 workers. And there is a task channel that is providing these 20 tasks one by one and wait group for synchronization. Next I will start all my go routine workers and provide them with the channel that they need. Then I will start sending task one by one into this particular channel so that workers can pick it up. And finally, when I am done with all the tasks to be pushed into the channel, I will close the channel. And then I will add a wait group for the synchronization to happen. And this is how you can implement worker pool concurrency in your Golang program. Pattern two, pipeline concurrency. Now, what if your process has multiple stages like each stage depends on the output of the previous step. A pipeline is a series of stage connected by channels where each stage perform a specific task on the data it receives and passes the result to the next stage. Suppose you are a photo editor agency and have three employees each specialized in different tasks like image resizing, applying filters and compression. When a client comes in with a new request, you immediately take it and pass it to the team. We start processing the image in the specific order, each dependent on the output of the other. While you are not taking part in the photo editing process, therefore you are free to do the other works. Here you can compare yourself as the main thread whereas the rest of the three employees as the go routine thread. Let's have a look at the architecture of this pipeline. Stages independent go routine that perform a specific task example filtering transforming data etc channel they help you connect stages and transfer data between them finally there is a synchronization as well using sin dot wait group you can synchronize all these channels to signal completion this pattern shines when you wanna execute tasks concurrently but each task have their series of steps that are executed separately from the main thread now let's look at the code example. Since pipeline executes in stages, I will generate the stages first. So here I created a generate function, which if you compare with the previous example is similar to client generating a request. Then in the next stage, I will create another function, which is called square. As the name suggests, it returns the square of the number it is provided with. Then in the third stage, you can see I have created a filter which filters out all the numbers which are greater than 50. Again, this is the third stage and then there is a fourth stage which is called printer. It prints out all the numbers in the console. And finally, it's time to run our function. I have defined my four stages. I will define a pipeline to run all these stages concurrently. Here I have run pipeline concurrency example 
first generate a random number then i define some variables i have also defined a done channel that will listen to all the go routines to synchronize them next i will create a pipeline and in the pipeline i first call our generate function the response of the generate function is passed to the square function and then the response of square function is passed to the filter function and this way i have a pipeline and finally i will run the go printer to print all the numbers in parallel then we will close the channel and then wait for the go routines to finish pattern 3 fan out and fan in when you need maximum parallelism the fan out and fan in pattern is your go to solution fan out means distributing work across multiple go routines to process data in parallel fan in means collecting the results back into the single output channel here is the architecture input channel source of task worker go routines process task in parallel output channel collect result from the worker synchronization uses work group to coordinate task completion let me show you a code example here first i will define a worker which doesn't actually do anything but simply execute for one second to emulate the real world worker then there is function called run fan in fan out concurrency example first i will define a channel for job as well as a channel for result then i will start all my workers to start listening to the job channel basically whenever there is any job in the job channel it will pick it up then i will start sending jobs into my job channel till now you can see that our implementation is similar to worker pool concurrency pattern but here is the catch we have a result channel as well and this result channel will actually collect all the executed jobs so finally here we will collect all the result from all the channels and this is how you can implement the fan in fan out architecture pattern 4 mutex pattern in this pattern you have a shared resource like a data store or an object and then there are many workers that are accessing the same resource the mutex pattern is crucial when multiple go routines need to access the same resource safely to understand the mutex pattern consider this bank example let's say you are a bank that holds one account of both rahul and seema basically they have a joint account now rahul and seema together have saved five thousand dollars into their bank account so as a bank you need to make sure that both rahul and seema cannot concurrently at the same time withdraw $5,000 each. That would mean that bank has given $10,000 to both of them, which is good for the customer but bad for the bank. So here the concept of mutex lock come in. When Rahul is transacting with the bank, Seema is not allowed to transact with the bank. And when Seema starts the transaction with the bank, Rahul is blocked from transacting with the bank. Now let's look at the architecture of mutex pattern. Golang provides it built in. Then there is a critical section, the code that is protected by mutex lock and mutex unlock. Then there is a shared resource, data structure or variable accessed by multiple go routine. And finally there is read write lock. Now let's look at a code example. Here I will define a shared counter which is protected by the sin mutex. Sin mutex is Golang's built in mutex type. Then we will define a shared counters methods which is first is increment this is doing a write operation on the shared counter and then we will do a read operation via the value method. This value method reads the value and returns the value that is present in the shared counter. Now in our function run mutex concurrency example here we will define two variables one is counter which is our shared resource the shared counter which every go routine will be accessing soon and then there is a wait group to basically synchronize the concurrent access next i will start 100 go routines that are incrementing the same shared counter and finally i will add this wait group dot wait to basically wait for all the go routines to finish pattern 5 sema 4 pattern SEMA4 pattern limits the number of go routines that can simultaneously access a resource, preventing the system overload. In Mutex, we allowed only one go routine to access shared memory, but in SEMA4, we allow a limited set of go routine. 
not just one but four or five or more to understand this consider this example let's say there is a restroom in the airport lounge where five people can use the restroom at a time so when the restroom opens for the first time five people enter at once then as one of them are done they come out leaving the restroom for the next person waiting to use the restroom let's look into the architecture of semaphore pattern there is a counting semaphore a buffered channel with capacity equal to maximum concurrent operation there is an acquire function sent to the semaphore channel there is a release function that receives from the semaphore channel and then there are worker go routines that execute task only after acquiring a semaphore let's have a quick look into the semaphore pattern this is very easy i promise so we define a semaphore in our program as compared to mutex there is no built in type for semaphore so we create a custom channel struct which is a semaphore then we define the constructor method which takes in a capacity parameter to basically define that this is the capacity of semaphore then we define the acquire method of this semaphore struct acquire method simply allocates a go routine to execute then there is a release method which releases a semaphore and finally we define our worker the worker is the place where the actual semaphore acquire and release happens so here you can see the semaphore is first acquired and then it is released after executing this function and only after acquiring this semaphore it will execute itself otherwise it will get blocked at this step itself so let's run our main function our main function is fairly simple because all the work is done by the worker method so we define the number of worker as well as number of semaphore capacity and then we create a new semaphore as well as a wait group then we simply just add all the worker or start all the workers in this process and then finally we wait for all the workers to finish so that's all for today's video i hope you learned a lot keep following bits of mandal for more golang and backend related videos